so i will begin uh, good evening everyone and at the onset i would like to congratulate dr nithi for this great initiative and also thank her for making me a part of this journey so i will kick off this session with the first presentation and it's about the endothelial cells and their importance So endothelial cells are important because uh, they maintain the water balance in the corneal stroma, which is important for the optical clarity. I will briefly touch upon a few topics like the embryology or the origin of these endothelial cells, their basic characteristics, how do they respond to stress or trauma, and uh, very briefly about the regeneration potential of these endothelial cells. Now this is the sixth week of intrauterine life, and here you see the neural. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, you have to go back uh, to the last part. Yes. Okay, so this is the first slide for the embryology or the development of endothelium, and this is the sixth week of uh, intrauterine life where the neural ectoderm has formed the optic cup, and uh, overlying surface ectoderm is now forming the lens vesicle, and with time the lens vesicle will be completely formed and it pinches off from the surface ectoderm and forms a future lens. The surface ectoderm will give rise to the corneal epithelium and the conjunctiva, while the neural ectoderm will give rise to the RPE and retinal pigment epithelium. The rest uh, of the structures are made by the neural crest. Now, before we go to uh, the neural crest and uh, how it forms the anterior segment, uh, the neural crest is basically uh, the junction between the neural plate or in case of eye the optic cup and the non neural ectoderm or in case of eye the surface ectoderm now these cells have um, uh, these cells also called as the uh, neural mesenchymal cells they will form the rest of the anterior segment structures in three waves the first wave gives uh, gives rise to the corneal and endothelium the second wave gives rise to the corneal stroma and the third wave will form the iris stroma, trabeculum, sclera, and choroid. Uh, a clinical corollary to it would be in Peters uh, syndrome, and it is believed that during the intrauterine development, the incomplete migration of these uh, mesenchymal cells or an incomplete separation of the structures formed by these mesenchymal cells leads to development of this uh, anomalous uh, eye. And here we see a corneal opacity, which is predominantly posterior in posterior stromal, along with the iridocorneal adhesions, and at times an associated cataractus lens, which is adhered to them. Coming to the corneal endothelial cells morphology, these cells uh, have an approximate size of around 200 microns. Most of the cells are hexagonal in their appearance, and it's normal to find cells which have five to seven sides. They're relatively flattened cells, and they have a relative nucleus bulge. Now, the topographic difference is that the peripheral cells tend to be smaller, they're compact, and they have a higher density. And the clinical relevance comes when we select a large size diameter of a uh, DMAC graft. It will have a lot more uh, cells, not only in number, but also peripheral cells, which have a higher potential to regenerate. Now we know that the cell density is maximum at birth and in the initial two years, there is a slight drop in the cell density as the corneal diameters enlarge. Subsequently, the cell density remains more or less stable with the average cell loss of 0.3 to 0.6% per, per year. And in old age, there is further drop in the cell density. As you can see that in spite of loss of the cell density, the hexagonality of the endothelium is relatively maintained. The corneal endothelial cells, when seen on ultrastructure, they show high metabolic activity as uh, observed with plenty of mitochondria and other intracellular organelles. The presence of tight junctions at the apices and the, uh, the lateral margins, they have uh, gap junctions and therefore the barrier formed by the endothelium is partially leaky. But it's important uh, to see that in spite of the cell counts going down to as low as 400 or below, 
the barrier function remains intact and it's only the metabolic uh, pump of the endothelium which weakens and which leads to chronic edema coming to the next slide uh, we'll talk about the decimates membrane so decimates membrane is the basement membrane of endothelium uh, the formation of decimates membrane begins uh, intrauterine also uh, only and the fetal layer or the fetal part of the decimates membrane has a anterior bended zone the fetal or the anterior bended zone decimates membrane is much more compact much better organized and more sticky to the endothelium or oh, sorry to the stroma while the posterior non bended zone which is uh, layered by layer deposited during the adult life is more amorphous and it also thickens with the uh, as a as a response to injury and therefore it is also seen to have a thickened decimates membrane in patients with persistent inflammation in patients with endothelial disease like fuchs dystrophy a clinical correlation can be seen when we are trying to peel off the decimates membrane in young people they form a tight scroll and also it's difficult to peel them off because the anterior bended zone is more strongly adhered to the stroma coming to the last segment is the endothelial replacement or the healing response of uh, endothelium endothelium remarkably has very little mitotic potential and therefore whenever there is injury to the endothelium the usual response from the surrounding cells is by the form of enlargement of cells and migration of these uh, cells which are surrounding that area of injury initially it leads to reduced cell density in that particular zone and subsequently as the cells are trying to uh, cover up the area of defect the cells are more irregular in shape and size but over time the cell uh, the cell size and shape tends to get back to normal how the cell density remains low we can also observe intracellularly that uh, when there is such a healing response you can see uh, intracellular development of vacuoles pigment and uh, the layering uh, down of the pass material in gettati an important uh, healing response shown by these endothelial cells is sometimes transformation into a mesenchymal kind of cell these cells are responsible for laying down the retrochondrial membrane or the fibrous membranes seen typically in severe chemical injuries or severe episodes of toxic anterior shock syndrome now what causes these cells uh, what inhibits these cells from division there are many theories but and one of the important reason that these cells don't divide is contact inhibition also it has been said that the lack of effective growth stimulation because of the low levels of positive growth factors in the aqueous also contribute finally with age the regeneration potential of these cells goes down and also a role of oxidative dna damage as the endothelium is exposed to the ultraviolet light throughout the life is also one of the reason that the cells remain arrested at this stage although in the last presentation we'll discuss perhaps in more detail i'll just have a look at the cell cycle and we see that the endothelium is stuck in g1 phase of the cell cycle because the next stage the next stage where it has to go to the s phase is blocked to understand in greater detail we have to see that the the cell to cell contact or the oxidative dna damage or with age there is a higher level of cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor proteins and they prevent the switch of uh, endothelial cells from g1 phase to s phase i'll not go into further details as we have one presentation dedicated to it to summarize the endothelial regeneration strategies can be to inhibit the cki's or to bypass the whole process by using adenoviral vectors to transfect these cells with certain viral oncoproteins and to kick start the mitosis rock uh, rock inhibitors have uh, been described to have a very uh, effective role in that also people have searched for stem cell like uh, properties of certain endothelial cells these cells are said to be located in the peripheral endothelium just near the trabecular meshwork and they may be the holy grail uh, for endothelial regeneration but more importantly uh, whatever method we use to regenerate these endothelium or endothelial cells it should be non mutagenic so that it has a long term safety and also they these cells should divide transiently and then should stop dividing so that 
there is no over application and therefore multi layering of the endothelium or blockage of trabecular mesh work can be avoided so with that i will wrap up this presentation thank you